Hello, this video is about how we might work faster with the latest version of Beaver Builder version 2.0. Now, I'll be honest, I wasn't going to do a video on this release as I felt the Beaver Builder team had already done an excellent job with their blog post updates and a couple of videos that they produced themselves. But when this came out on general release and I realized I needed to talk to my colleague about the changes and make something available to some clients, I realized there wasn't a single video that covered all of the new features. So that's what I'm trying to do with this video. I may not succeed because there's quite a lot to cover. I'm also aiming it largely at my colleague, Maria, but I've made it publicly available because it might be of use to someone else. But if you don't need a video walkthrough, I definitely would suggest that you go over to the Beaver Builder knowledge base where they've added a category for 2.0. And there are these articles at the moment which are all comprehensive and tells you all that you need to know. But if you enjoy listening to me struggle through my videos, you're gonna be in for a treat, I think this time, because there's quite a lot to cover. So what I've done is I've created a page on my own live demo site for Beaver Builder at only.beaverjunction.com. The link will be below this video, and you'll also find it under using BB and here. And on this page, I've listed out some of the features and I've included some animated GIFs so you can see what's going on, or GIFs. I'm not gonna get into that debate. I call it GIFs anyway. And also I've added some screenshots and this for myself, I'm trying to learn the shortcuts, which is a new feature of 2.0 so I can be more efficient. And I've placed those on a keyboard here so they make better sense to me. Okay, so I'm hoping there's gonna be some use in this. I'm gonna go back to the top of this document and work through it. But the first thing I'm gonna do is to go into the page builder itself. So just look at this. If you've not used 2.0 yet, look how quick that is. I'm just gonna come out and do it again. It's such fun. This is one of the big features is that things are now kind of preloading so they are instantly available when you want to go to a module. It's kind of just there as you'll see as we move on. Anyway, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Let's go over to the first thing I wanted to mention, which is about saving. Now, there is now automatic saving. It saves everything. Now, this is not entirely new to 2.0 because there was some saving in the later versions of 1. whatever where it did some saving, but I think it's more comprehensive now. It literally saves everything. So it saves the content that you're changing in the background without you doing anything. It, it saves the settings that you've changed. And it also, as on this version with the UI, you can move around your toolbars and dialog boxes. It also saves where it's positioned those as well. So it probably saves every thought you ever had while you were in the page builder itself, but I cannot confirm this. Okay, so there are things that go with this, I guess, knowing that you can save and also knowing with this version that you are more likely to stay in the page builder, it's probably time to start thinking about practices and how you and when you might do those permanent saves. So it's like version 1.0. As you notice, when I went out, there was no discard button as there is in version one, but there is as soon as you go and change something. So let's just go and make a change. I'm gonna take this full stop away and just save that there. Now, if I go to save or press done here, you'll see that I've got discard. So this is nothing new, but I'll just recap what happens here is that any thing that's been saved while you've been in the page builder in this session, since you last published, gets discarded. So it's all completely gone. And as you've got to spend more time in here, you probably want to avoid doing that so much. But anyway, that's what that does. So I'm just gonna come and cancel this. But there is a new thing here as well. If we go over, and this is what this little GIF is showing you. If we go over to this left-hand side here, we'll see we have access to WordPress revisions. So here we can access some of the latest saves. Now, this isn't the saving that Beaver Builder is doing. This is WordPress saving. So you need to have published, but there's more chance that you're gonna be using these shortcuts that I mentioned. So I think typically now I'm going to, after I've done a certain amount of work, I will, as I'm on Windows, I will use Control and P and that 
we'll do a save. Look, did you see that on the top? It says saved, and it said, I'm going to do it one more time, although it'll say something different. It says nothing new to publish now. But you get some dialogue over here, so you could use this shortcut. Now, when it's published, it will be available as a revision, which you can revert back to. I think maybe you need to refresh to be able to get that. But let me just show you this feature because it's pretty cool. I'm going to go right back to the very beginning. If I select on this and go back to the beginning, it's going to give me a preview of what it looked like when I started. So it's just a, a blank slate here. I'm going to cancel that now. Anyway, so that's one of the new features there. Now, also, while I'm over here, I ought to mention why you're likely to stay in the page builder more often because from here you can also go into admin section so you can go to your dashboard you can go and manage your templates or you can go into the theme customizer and all of these open up in a separate tab so you don't need to close off the page builder if you've not you know gone to some of these places so you can stay in here longer and there is another feature about all of this saving what happens with it saving everything you've done since you've opened the page builder, you're not going to lose that. So often people have issues with caching, browser caching, it, or something freezes. If that happens and you do a hard refresh, it's going to save all of that stuff. So that's really handy to know. Okay, that's enough on saving and undoing. Let's move on to the main features, which is really that the UI has completely changed and the settings panels are all quite different. I've already mentioned that they are instantly loading as we see. I'm going to click this. Look, it's just straight open. And I've actually got version one over here on another site. You can see what happens when you do that. You get this little spinny icon. In fact, my net's quite slow, so it's particularly spinny now. But I have to come out of this before I have to move on to something else. I can't go and click somewhere else. I have to wait for that to spin and then come out of it. Sometimes as my net is not so good, you get this and stuck. In fact, I'm going to leave this here because, oh, there we are. But we can't move around from one place to another. And that's another key feature of this. Not only have we got this instant load in here, we can move around. So I'm in the text editor here. When I want to go to a photo, it takes me straight to the settings here which is marvelous. Well, that's a different, I've only really got text and photos here, so I can't really demonstrate its power, but it is instantly loading up like this. Now, one thing to say about that is that it might not be so instant if you've got some of the third-party add-ons attached. I think most of those are now making it compliant with this new version and they will load quickly. But if things aren't loading quickly, it's probably due to that. Otherwise, Beaver Builder will just instantly pop those things up. So that's a great feature there. Um, as you can see here, this is free floating as it was on version one. And if you can see here, I can also stretch it out like this. And as on version one, we can just open them full and close them. But we can also, if you notice when I'm dragging this here, we've got this blue on the right and the left here. So I can dock these over to the side. So often if I might want to run through some of these things, I can see it all moving there and knowing where I'm going and make all of the changes over here. Now I'm working on a laptop, which is only 1366 pixels wide. So I haven't got a lot of space, but there is this here where I can hide this away. And when I go in to edit something else, as you can see it pops up again and I can hide it again as and when I need it. Also, as I mentioned before, let me just move this out. These are handles here, so you need to grab this to move it back out. Um, I can place this and it will remember where I've put it. because That's what it's remembering and it will remember the size. So next time I come in, it'll be placed where I need that. So that's a really handy feature. I better just go and check my notes here because I know I'm already going off script here. Oh yes, one of the UI things is another shortcut for you. If I press O here, we'll see everything goes into dark. So it's a little bit like Photoshop there. So I know some people like to work with the dark UI. I think photographers seem to like that the most, but I prefer white to be honest. Okay, and yeah, I think I think that's probably it on there. That's what it looks like. What I do need to show you is 
how you get to your other tools. If we go back to version one, you'll see if we go, um, yeah, there we are. We have to go through this to get to our tools. And in a way, it feels like the dialogue here is independent to where our modules are kept. Well, here, it's all in the same. Let me just park this over here. You'll see that our modules, rows, and templates, and save templates are all here. So I can show you here, these are all grouped together. So if I had one of the third party plugins here, it would be listing those and I could go to them and see them here and uh, in rows here and the third parties can add their own icon. So probably makes it easier to see, but these are nicely sectioned off now. And if it's difficult to find your module, you've also got a search over here, which I just opened up and you can just start typing in there so if you are using third party plugins and you're say after something like an accordion which is in beaver builder and in some of the third party ones you can just put accordion here and it will bring them all up so that's really handy and you can move to rows here which is more visual to drag those in templates are here where they're grouped as well and any third parties will be added there and also your saved rows and columns are over here and this is where the shortcuts come in really useful because they're kind of nicely arranged. Now, what I've done here is I've marked the yellow ones as sort of single press short codes. So this one, J, is going across, as you can see on the top there, to modules. And then it's K to rows, L for templates and semicolon takes me to save so that's pretty quick to do that i already covered o which is the, the changing of the dark to light or light to dark we have one that's really quite useful which is p which i think we'll use all the time which is a preview so you just click on and off so we can preview the whole thing and as you can see over here it brings up your options to be able to see the responsive views as well so let me just press P again and that covers that and then there's also these extra ones now if I go back over to here you'll notice that you can bring up the keyboard short codes here but presently maybe they'll change this there's only so much space they've got here there are two missing so the one that is control or command P which allows you to publish isn't listed there and control or command E which allows you to re-enter the page builder after publishing is also not listed there and there is a bonus one actually if you're an ultimate add-ons for beaver builder user they've got a P which brings up their global settings now one that i particularly like that has the control or command is the y and the u and this may change how i work in the future because generally i've been somebody who says that i want to put my css in my style sheet that belongs to my theme but i'm starting to get into the idea of keeping aside some page specific kind of css and keep that in there and it's really easy now to get to it used to be a bit of a pain you have to search through tools and in different ways now we just have to go if i go to control y here you'll see that it's taking me straight into css here so this is for the layout or page settings here and if i want the global settings i go to you there we go to global settings where i can set global css as well which ah this site has some there Okay, did I leave anything out here? Oh yes, one that I will definitely be using quite a lot will be Control or Command I, which will take me again. I'm not using this very well, am I? Let's come out of this. I, I to be honest, I f free float mostly. If I go to I, that takes me to my search for modules, so that's going to get used quite a lot. Anyway, I think I'm largely covered most of the things there were a couple of things there that really didn't get mentioned or i didn't spot them let me just get that out of the way quite like that it's quite neat um now i don't know if you've done this you'll see i'm doing it on this version over here let's just come out of here when you needed to center something particularly with text here you could center say a heading module and that would just line up in the center but if you wanted your text to be centered but you didn't want the actual text to be centered so it looked a little bit odd and wanted it to be left aligned but still in the middle you would need to create these extra columns which is extra useless divs well now 
you don't need to do that because you can actually set the rows width on each of them and just bring them in together like this and as you can see down here while well, I've got my handle here you can see it's giving me the number but if I go into my row settings here you can see that you can set this I'm not sure what I had this on but typically I have 1200 there okay let me come out of that so I think that's really useful and another feature here is that they've added duplicate columns so often a situation where there'll be three columns that I'll set up which will have identical layouts they will maybe have a header module some text a photo and maybe another module and even though I duplicate those and then change the content in them it's a more long-winded what you can do here is to just set one up with all of your modules and just start duplicating those columns and that's going to speed that up so I think I'm coming to the end of this I've been going on for some time I don't know if I've missed anything off it just made me think one final thought on this as I was moving around. I thought if I was working from a PSD or a pre a design that I can look at and I want to replicate it, I might now think it's more efficient to work by setting up the columns because once you put a column, once you put a module in a column, you can't access that column easily without having to go via this route. Whereas if I wanted a page layout, I might set up all my padding and margin backgrounds and responsive settings all in one go as I can click through from one to the other and move quickly. Um, I mentioned about chunking the work up. I think that's a useful thing. I would definitely be regularly publishing. And if you're on a live site, I would be taking my friend Hoog Ordward's tip there's a link to his video on using templates and then saving those out to the live site so you can still work with it uh, as I mentioned I might be using page layout CSS a bit more often because I can work within the page faster and I'll just kind of organize how my CSS is differently and one other feature that I noticed in the knowledge base is that you can if you're a bit of a developer create your own short codes so you can add your own as well to this and I'll certainly be trying to keep an eye out on the knowledge base because what I've noticed is that there's often some useful tips that appear in this knowledge base which I didn't know anything about until somebody points it out so probably something to keep a, a look out for anyway let me just have a quick look over the page is there anything glaring that I missed off I hope not I hope I've covered most of the main features and I really, really hope that this was useful to at least somebody. Anyway, if you did like it, then please give me a thumbs up on YouTube because that helps me. And if not, I hope to talk to you again on another video soon. Thanks very much for listening and goodbye.